Hello and welcome to another Kangaroo English Daily Digest. My name is Christian and today is Tuesday, best day of the week. <laughs> um, I've been uh, I've been quite busy lately with um, with with work, <laughs> with uh, with Fluentify videos, with uh, with a little bit of travel and and also planning for the future, planning for the next step in the evolution of of Kangaroo English. I I can't wait to get started. Um, but more about that an another time. Um, I hope that you're all well and and happy and 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 working hard, studying hard. Uh, yeah. So um, let let's talk about let's talk about word of the day because just just earlier I really felt a strong I felt a strong push to make this daily digest like. An invisible hand forcing me to, to make this. You could say that I felt an impetus to make this video. <laughs> so um, impetus means that. Impetus means uh, a force or, or, or a pressure that pushes you to do something. So for example, you could say, well, I, I had a lot of impetus to make this, this video. Or I, I really don't have any impetus to study for that exam. For example, <laughs> um, and it's a great word. It comes from Latin, and and it comes from the, the Latin verb petare. So here's the petare bit. So petare means to go. So im petare to go in. And what do you do when you go in? You attack. So impetus really it means to attack. So when you have the impetus to do something, you go in there and attack it. And that Latin verb petare also gave us another really important word in English, which is appetite. Because when you have the appetite, right, it's the same thing. You have that, that urge to eat. Yeah? You want to eat. You want to attack that food. <laughs> well, that's how I eat anyway. <laughs> um, okay, so... I wanted to talk about something really interesting, a really interesting scientific paper that I read recently. Um, and, and it was published in Nature. And Nature is a very, very important publication. So this is a serious piece of work. Okay. And let me, let me just demonstrate something quickly. Okay. On the board. So, um, in basically in in the world of languages you have two main types of languages you have subject verb object and object verb subject right so so for example um, English is SVO so we would say um, the man the man sits can you see that yeah okay the man sits on the chair for example, okay, the man sits on. So we have the man with the verb, uh, the subject and the verb and then the object, man sits on the chair. But other languages uh, ca can be the reverse, can be the reverse or, or different orders. So for example, um, like in Japanese, it would be more, in Japanese you would say maybe sits on the chair, sits on the chair, the man, okay? Now, in, in linguistics, okay, there's, there's, when you describe these type of languages where the, where the, 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 the sort of the, 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 the important part of the sentence, we can say that this is the important part. They're called left branching and right branching languages. Because when you draw, when you draw the um, semantic tree, you know that when you when you make a when you make a diagram of the sentence, uh, this type of language goes to the right, and this type of language goes to the left. So left and right branching, and and so there was there was a theory. Okay, a theory. The theory was this is the theory that a person who speaks, for example, English, 
when they when they mentally process a sentence then a lot of their attention you know a lot of their attention is at the beginning of the sentence it makes sense i mean in english we have this thing called fronting where if you want to make something important you put it at the beginning of the sentence you can play with word order so for example you could say um uh, I, um, for example, with an adverb, you could say, I recently went to the theater. Recently, I recently went, second position. Or you could put it at the end, I went to the theater recently. And if it's at the end, it's not important. But if you put it right at the beginning, the word recently is very important. So recently, I went to the theater. So in English, by moving something to the front, it's more important, it's more... It's more thing. It's more vivid, real, right? And with, with Japanese, for example, it would be different. You know, I don't want to, to give specific examples because this is I'm not an expert in this, okay? But you know, I would I would guess I would guess that in Japanese you put something at the end, it makes it more important, right? Makes it more important at the end. So the theory is that if you speak a language where the important stuff is at the beginning, then your brain is different than if you speak a language where all the important stuff is at the end. So with time, and it makes sense, you know, your your, your brain develops to adapt to your, your daily needs, your daily necessities. So the I, this is the theory that your memory and your ability to process information is also different. And in the paper, they actually prove that it's true. Okay, what's the best way to what's the best way to demonstrate it? Um, okay, for example, for example, um, if oh, I'm so not prepared. Okay, we'll do it. We'll do it with these with these letters. So imagine this. I I I actually I can we can actually reproduce the experiment quite quite correctly. You could say. Okay, so see this symbol. Okay. When I show you this symbol, you have to remember what I showed you. Okay, so for example, um, mm, maybe if I move out of the way, you can see with the contrast. Ready? Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay, so, and then, oh, and then this. Oh. Okay, so so basically I showed you I showed you G G seven Q and then I showed you this and this says okay tell me what you saw and you have to remember the sequence. Okay? And what they discovered was that people who spoke languages like English, where their brains were very good at remembering things at the beginning, right? So imagine this is the order. G, 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 G. <laughs> this is a terrible demonstration. So this is the order. G, G, 7, Q, right? G, G, 7, Q. Now, people who speak English would remember these two letters. Their memory, their brain, it starts to remember things from this direction, from the beginning. But people who spoke other languages, like Japanese, for example, who, where the order is the opposite, they were more likely to remember the last two. They would remember the Q and the seven. It's like their brains were accustomed to working, we could say, for us, backwards. For me, backwards, but for them, not backwards. For them, I'm backwards. <laughs> um, and that's really fascinating. It's an example of how of how language, you know, how language can affect other parts of your, of your, of the way your brain works. Okay, here's the paper here. It's called, um, The Word Order of Languages Predicts Native Speakers' Working Memory from Nature. Um, super, super fascinating uh, paper. I'll, I'll put a link if you want to read it. Um, and that's it. Uh, th uh, I hope you enjoyed today's Daily Digest. Thank you for tolerating me. Uh.
<laughs> and um, I'll be back tomorrow with some exciting new things. Um, uh, lots of love. I'm, I'm Christian. This is Kangaroo English. I'll see you in class.